Um, so we know the terror alert has been raised to critical, which according to the Home Office website means an attack is expected imminently. We heard the Prime Minister saying maybe expected. Which is it? Well, this is an operational matter, really, to work out exactly how imminent it is. Your definition is right, though. We have been at severe, which means an attack is highly likely. Critical means an attack is imminent. So JTAC, the Joint Terrorism Analysis Centre, who is independent, decided at the end of the day yesterday that we should be raised to this higher level of critical. We've now given the intelligence services and the police who are working closely together additional support to make sure that they can continue their investigation. And we hope that everybody can stay safe during that period. So the fact that you've raised it to critical means then, does it, that you have intelligence? Well, it, can I just correct one thing? It, it has been raised to critical, but it is based on intelligence, which is assessed by the Joint Terrorism Analysis Centre. They obviously have the intelligence, which has given them uh, the incentive to do this, but I can't be drawn any further on operational matters. I understand that. And we also have information today that we understand he was known to security services. Can you tell me how he was known? No, I, I mean, I can't do that. I'm sure that we will find out more over the next few days, over the next few weeks. And, um, you know, that will come out at some stage. But at the moment, the really important thing, I believe, is to give the police and the investigation services, investigative services, the support and the space they need to conclude this operation, which, as you rightly say, has taken our level of threat level to critical. I know you have said this morning he was known up to a point. Can you give me any more information on that, what you mean by that? Um, I'm afraid I can't. I mean, the intelligence services uh, know a lot of people uh, and I'm sure we will find out more what level they knew about him in due course. But at the moment, all they have done is confirm that they did know about him. And as I say, we will find out more when the operation is complete. There are suggestions uh, that he may recently have t returned from Libya. Is there more information on that? Yes, I believe that has been confirmed. I mean, when this operation is over, we will want to look at uh, his background and what happened, how he became radicalised and, you know, what, what support he might have been given. But at the moment, our attention is really focused on the operation itself, which must be the priority in order to keep everybody safe. Uh, you've mentioned JTAC. Just uh, tell me who is on it. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a group of intelligence and foreign security experts. It's, it's under the auspices, really, of MI5. And they, of course, have an operational responsibility that is independent, but overall reporting to me as Home Office. So it's, it's a group of people with particular expertise in intelligence, in foreign affairs and in terrorism. Can you give me an example of whom, like whom? No, I, I really, I can't. There are elements of this which have to be kept confidential. OK, um, can you tell us at this point whether you know or you are investigating whether or not he acted alone? Well, that's exactly what the ongoing operation is trying to establish. As has been pointed out, this was a horrific, violent event. It was more sophisticated than some of the uh, you know, horrific events that we've seen in the past or in other parts of Europe. So people are reasonably wondering whether he did this on his own. And I'm making sure that the police and the intelligence services doing that investigation have the support they need to find out who might be, who might have been working with him, because ultimately our focus is always going to be on making sure that we keep people safe. Making sure they keep, keep them safe is the best way to do that, is to ensure that this operation ends. And on that point about safe, safety, we, what does being le this level being raised to critical mean in pure practical terms? Well, one of the things it means is that uh, we have begun Operation Tempera, which means that the police can access military personnel and equipment when they need it in order to make sure that they can step up levels of security. Over the next few days, there are a number of events. There's the Great Manchester Run. Um, there's a number of, of, of big sort of public events taking place. And we want to make sure that everybody feels safe. So this will enable the police to have extra resources to give that evidential support at those events so that people can carry on with their lives. And we hope that people will carry on. I would urge people to be more vigilant than usual, 
to be alert but not alarmed, to call uh, the terrorist hotline or their local police force if they are concerned. But we mustn't let these sort of events uh, stop our way of life. We will make sure that these events are properly policed, that the police have the support they need, and Operation Tempera will allow additional military support so that people can carry on. You talk about military support. Does that mean soldiers on our streets? How many and for how long? Well, it's, it's, it's up to 3,800 and it's up to the police to decide how they want to call those down. It's an operational matter. How long is very important. Uh, I would expect this to be temporary. We will see how long we need them for, but we will keep a careful eye on it to make sure that when it's appropriate, uh, we, we end Operation Tempera and go back to our different levels. So you're talking days rather than weeks, are you? I'm afraid I can't comment in any more detail because it is an operational matter, but I would repeat that this is absolutely expected to be temporary.